Origin of Love used to be one of my karaoke songs. I'm a huge Hedwig fan, massive Hedwig fan. What was your reaction when you found out that you guys would be doing Hedwig this year? Confused, <laughs> because I didn't know how that was gonna work. I didn't know if it was just gonna be one person playing multiple Hedwigs. Like I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure, but I also wasn't quite familiar with the musical itself. You know, I had known like, oh, Michael C. Hall and Darren Chris and Neil Patrick Harris had done the, has done this character on Broadway, but I watched the movie from 2001 and it was fantastic and so cool and, and trippy. And I was like, I see why we're doing this. The songs itself are so out of our comfort zone, I'd say, from what we've done in the past. So I was very excited to sort of do something that's so different for all of us. I was pretty excited to hear that it was Ed, uh, Hedwig. I know that the music was gonna be a lot different. And when I got into the studio, for the first time and started singing the stuff. It was really good. There's some rock and roll in there, which people are gonna like. Maybe that's just me, I like it. I actually never heard of it before, so I got to discover it through this episode. I'm trying to remember when I first found out. I think I heard like whisperings of it in December or so. And then when we got the actual, the first question I asked was like, what am I wearing? This that's is the first important. time I actually heard of Hedwig. Right in the second? Yeah, I never heard of Hedwig before. Not, be not before today, <laughs> right now? <laughs> Like before this was written into the episode, oh, I didn't yes. know what Hedwig See, was. I knew what it was only because I know that it was on Broadway in New York. <laughs> I hadn't seen it yet. But then when I watched the movie, I was actually really excited. And I knew immediately it must be Kevin Keller. Like it's just screaming Kevin Keller to me. And what a great, it's really fun to play. I think it's the perfect Riverdale musical because I mean, just from my experience watching the performances and everyone singing and just kind of like the message that it portrays in this episode, I think a lot of people can relate to it. Just really embracing like your identity and like who you are. The previous musical episodes haven't been uh, as rock intensive. It seems to me that over time, the music with in the musical episodes have become a character within the episode, as opposed to at least season two where we were all singing or we were up on stage, that as the seasons have gone on, we've simply suspended our disbelief that all the characters will spontaneously erupt into song and, and sing and dance according to the larger narrative at play. The character of this, this musical seems to be much more rebellious than, than the previous ones. It almost takes place in more of a fantasy world rather than on a stage, but we're performing it as a way of rallying against our principal who won't let Kevin put on Hedwig and the Angry Inch as the spring musical. So we sort of are performing it in our regular life as well as in the variety show that is performed at the end of the year by all of us. I don't do any of the dancing or any of the, and the musicals in this. I kind of just stand around with my arms crossed. I'm the Scrooge in this episode. I'm, I'm the, Grin the Grinch. I, I thought the random generator number was pretty good. And it involved everybody. We started in my office and we're out in the hallway and then we're into a classroom and we're back into the hallway. And it was a huge number involving a lot of people. It's fun to watch. If I were to question if Jughead were to sing at all, I would probably have said no. He doesn't really seem like that character that desires any kind of attention from a larger audience. The couple songs that I do sing on, one is Midnight Radio, which is performed by the Archies. And the other is going to be Origin of Love, but he's sort of locked away in his own little reclusiveness. Very typical Jughead. I feel like the songs fit the best into the storyline this year. Like I feel like it actually makes sense of what's happening. I feel like they've really incorporated it very well. We had we a fun have, Yeah, <laughs> we have a fun duet together. So yeah. that's been the best part. The way that they wrote hours into the script, it mm -hmm. feels very much something that Shoni would do, I feel like, right? Yeah. Betty and Archie sing a song together. Betty Jughead, Archie and Veronica sing a song when they're fighting at each other. It's more, uh, the lyrics really speak to to the characters and their relationships more so than, than anything else, I think. There's a really cool song that me and Betty have together that uh, is pretty, it's just nice. It's nice to see them as friends again and you know singing with each other and maybe a little more. I was really excited to be able to sing some of the songs. It's become obvious to me now that they definitely want a different rendition of the songs. I was, you know, really going in with the Mitchell version and then I realized I was like, oh, everyone's kind of singing a different version. So it's about figuring out what our own voice was within that dialogue. But I'm excited to hear the final product and see how it turns out. I think the one I was most curious about was Exquisite Corpse, because Exquisite Corpse is such a punk rock song. It's really intense. And so I remember being like, first of all, how am I gonna sing that in a Veronica way? Cause it's like, it's one thing for me to do it as me and like put on a voice and do that whole punk rock genre type singing. But it's another thing for Veronica to do it. Like, I don't know that she would. So it's like trying to find that balance of like how Veronica would approach singing that kind of song. And it actually turned out really good. KJ 
in particular sounds amazing on it. It's interesting, you know, I, I think some of the songs don't seem as natural to me and, and some seem a little more natural. I don't think many of them have ever been like, boom, this is, this is the one for Archie. Uh, thus far, Kevin has a number that is definitely pretty out there and pretty different to anything we've done. It's definitely bringing the house down. And there's a little moment in there actually that we have, uh, me and Kevin, Archie and Kevin, that's gonna take people by surprise, I think. Casey, who plays Kevin, is absolutely killing it right now. He's kind of carrying this whole musical on his shoulders. Oh my gosh, Casey has been a superstar in this episode. I'm so excited for people to see it. The first time I saw Casey Cott in drag, I had to do like a quadruple take. I wasn't even sure it was him. It's been a lot of fun to watch these guys. It's so much fun to watch him be so in his element in, in a musical theater way. I think Casey is so talented musically. I sort of just wish he could star in every play on Broadway ever. So I'm really excited uh, that the world is going to see that. And it's really kind of takes your breath away.